Hey Fidelity Fortune Hunters, it's Tom Wilmot. Uh, welcome to our video series on Advanced Trader Pro. In this particular chapter of the series, we're going to be discussing a couple of very important things. Number one, we're going to uh, give you some follow-up information on the nice comments and questions you've left in, uh, in the descriptions after previous videos on how to close out trades. Many of you have asked about that. And I'm going to show you how to do that quickly. Uh, in addition to that, the second thing we're going to focus on is how we can compare the technical indicators that we use over in the Forex market on our platform MetaTrader and try to translate those to help be helpful to us in trading on Fidelity Active Trader Pro. And you can see those indicators listed right here. And we're going to uh, describe a couple of new ones for you today as well as compare them to how we uh, handle the Forex marketplace. So hold on to your hat. We'll get started right after this. Okay, let's uh, quickly review, friends, uh, the uh, open trade boxes that you'll get when you move to the options environment. In this particular uh, area right here, we have IBM uh, up on the uh, up on the chart wall, and in particular, I've already uh, gone ahead and gone to the options tab up at the top and pulled up an options box, and here we have our calls. And if you don't want calls, if you want something else, you can see this list goes on and on with various types of uh, uh, option strategy. Our purpose today is not to get involved with option strategies and explain them. It's to show you how to execute them. Uh, there are other places you can go where you can get great advice about strategies. I'll, I'll show you a couple of ideas, but that's not the purpose of our video today. It, it, basically, the situation is that, as you know, well, let me move this down a bit. <clears throat> we had a, a downdraft here when the uh, virus information uh, the coronavirus information hit the markets. We've recovered. This is the IBM chart. And as you can see, we had a crossover of our 12 and 24 here. That was the original pop, then a pullback, which we always expect. You always wait for the pullback after the crossover. And then we have also taken out our, uh, our uh, line, our Maginot line here, which is the uh, teeth, uh, the uh, EXP. Uh, exponential average 47. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'll, I'll slow down a bit. Bottom line is when you get over this hump, this area here, you have upward facing moving averages. You get a second pullback into the bands and any one of those areas, especially after you cross the 47, is a pretty great place to enter. Now notice even up here we have a pullback. We'd like a little bit more juice in that. But obviously, we're also potentially heading up into this area, which was the high that was reached prior to the earnings announcement in October. So in any event, uh, let, I'm not suggesting you buy IBM options or that it's going to go up. But seriously, these are the upward indicating uh, areas. After you see this crossover, you basically have a buy zone anywhere afterwards. Okay, that's the buy zone. That doesn't mean you buy. That means that there's an opportunity if you get the right setup to get involved in the marketplace. So in any event, then down here, let's say if we we're out here up at the 125.76 mark today, I'm recording this on uh, the 10th of December 2020. Uh, bottom line is, we have a little pullback. Maybe you'd like to buy an option, and depending upon the kind of uh, delta you'd like to get, <clears throat> and that delta is right here in this column, which you can add to your uh, to your customized uh, option uh, box. Uh, right here, the 125 is a 54. If you go back to the 120, fully in the money, you'd have then five dollars and seventy-seven cents worth of intrinsic value on that option. 
and the difference between that and uh, where you are in premium, 755 bids, 780 is the ask price. So in any event, that's the situation there that you can pull up and see for yourself. If you don't have enough money to go for the 755, 780, perhaps you'd like to do a spread and you could you could click over here and go down to the bottom of the menu and find the vertical spread. And and maybe that would allow you to do, say, a put credit spread that would allow you to get into a trade for less of an investment. Obviously, this is going to be seven hundred and eighty dollars on the ask for one contract now. The thing I wanted to tell you that came up in the comments, how do I get out of trades and where, where, how do I find these things? Well, basically, there are a bunch of invisible icons that are hiding in these boxes here. And you can see them, the, this little icon pops up. And so if we wanted to get the 120, we would simply click on this box. And that would allow us to say buy to open. And that's what we would do with a with an uh, option. We're going to initiate the trade, so we're going to buy to open. Okay. Now, if we got rid of that, oops, sorry about that. I'll come back here to our tools and use, because what we have now is, uh, let's see, we've got the, the the trade idea, and that pops up over here. If you hit buy to open, then you'll get your trade box, and they'll have the symbol, the uh, date, and so forth going to buy to open. Here's where you can specify quantity, order type, like good till cancel or market orders or limit and so forth. Uh, and I'm sorry, conditions would be none or all of the above and so forth in a margin account. So then you'd hit this to preview the trade so that you're sure everything is correct. And then you would move from that level forward uh, to execute the trade. Okay. Now, the point I'd like to make here, and I'm going to raise this back up so you can see it more clearly. Um, if you are closing an account, you do you would go to the account area, and this is the drop-down box you'll see. Positions here, all your existing positions will pop up. In order for it to be less crowded, options by strategy, or options by underlying, or options by expiration. If you have a spread, best to do strategy, then you don't see them individually. Options by underlying uh, uh uh, symbol would be here, but this would be the place to go to close out some kind of a, 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 a spread uh, kind of thing. So you don't have to do two sides individually. You can do both sides at once. Now, I would do that for you today, only I don't have any options going. So as you know, as from previous questions and comments, uh, Fidelity doesn't offer a practice account, so I can't show you that. There's nothing live here for me right this minute. I closed out uh, an Amazon uh, spread last week, and, and I was uh, doing other things, so I couldn't pay attention, and that's fast moving, so I was trying to be cautious. Okay, so that's the end of the first segment once again. Uh, if you go to options, you can pull up your option chain. Once you get to your options chain, you can you can uh, effectively enter a position or you can price out positions and estimate values and so forth. And we've covered that also in other videos in the list. Uh, and then if you're in a position and you want to close it out, you go to the accounts area. And typically I would use options by underlying. And one of those invisible icons will appear right after the name of the trade. So let's say the name of the trade is here in your in your position statement. Right after it is where you will find that little box to, to run your cursor and click in order to close that strategy. Hope that helps. Next segment, we're going to talk about the Forex market just a little bit to compare our technical indicators. Okay, so uh, for those of you who are new to some of our videos or who have never looked over at the currency trading area on our website or in our other videos and have been just interested in ATP, that's fine. But I want to show you why we got into Advanced Trader Pro uh, in the first place. And it was uh, for two reasons. Number one, I was interested to see if my indicators could be translated uh, onto that platform, and if so, if they would help. And uh, so that's what we've been up to. And then once I got into ATP, I decided that there wasn't much explanatory information on the Internet, so I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring, and uh, and this is the result of it. So in any event, here is, uh, the uh, for those of you new to it, just a quick review, uh, or overview rather, 
Uh, this is the U.S. dollar versus the Japanese yen. So if you see uh, charts moving to the north, that means the dollar is strengthening. Later on, you can see the dollar might be weakening. And here was a situation where, uh, and by the way, currencies are primarily driven by interest rates uh, and interest rate decisions in various central banks. That used to be a little easier to track before we had like zero and minus interest rates in Europe and all sorts of bond buying programs and crazy stuff like that. But the bottom line is that, you know, the interest rate really has an impact on the value of every currency and the central banks work very uh, hard to compete with one another to attract funds. So in any event, bottom line here now is that with the pandemic and with potential uh, big uh, ticket uh, strategies by the Fed and by the central government to uh, to uh, uh, get the economy going again, uh, that's going to weaken the dollar. So you saw this morning with a, with a uh, some kind of an employment uh, result that wasn't what was expected. We had a drop off in, in what was happening here. As we headed in, this is the beginning of the day last night at eight o'clock, and it, the forex market is clearly a 24-hour market. But in any event, we had to move higher, and then once the information hit uh, around around uh, 7:30. Uh, Eastern Stan Eastern Daylight Time, Eastern Standard Time, sorry, uh, we had a downdrift in the dollar here based upon the fact that, uh, you know, we had higher unemployment than was anticipated. But who cares? We're going to move back to technical analysis. Notice that we have here on our MetaTrader uh, platform the RSI with the same 45-55 band in place. And number two, uh, we have... Uh, our multiple moving averages, which are listed right here, the 12, the, the 16, 20, and 24. We also have the 47 uh, on our, uh, on our uh, uh, I'm sorry, on our uh, exponential moving averages and so forth. Uh, these are two others. One is called Trend Magic. That's quite helpful to us as we uh, track ourselves uh, in the marketplace. And the other is a chandelier that helps us to tell when the markets might be changing direction. And you can see here that the uh, upside chandelier, which is right here, once it's uh, taken out, the support line comes in place. And you can see we did have a very nice kind of a move to the north. Once we got clicked out here, we had this one appear, and that's a downside uh, upside resistance downside is looking like the direction of the trend. And that was pretty clever and clear. Now, we don't have either of those in Fidelity, so let me get rid of those right now. I'll delete them for you so you can see. This leaves us with what we have right now in Fidelity. Now, there are two things that I wanted to uh, talk about a little bit. One is the ability to have the T3 Tilson uh, in our in our uh, mix. This is a smooth moving average, and you can see it also is quite helpful. Once on a 30 minute, 15 minute chart here, 15 or 30 minute chart, you see the moving average is crossing the T3 Tilson. That's a pretty good indication that that we have uh, a move to the north coming. Likewise, over here, move is stalled. The moving averages have crossed back over, and, and down we go. Now the T3 Tilson is pretty much the same. As the, uh, as the exponential 47, and it will become an important piece of information for you when we move over to, uh, uh, to uh, Active Trader Pro in just a second here. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say was that many of you may have heard of another indicator uh, that is a trend indicator, and it's the Ichimoku Cloud. That's the indicator that was put forward in uh, in Japan uh, many years ago, part of the rice trade. It's an uh, ancient uh, and very, very powerful uh, indicator, and it uh, has a cloud associated with it. And the bottom line is, if you're above the cloud, it's positive, and below the cloud, you're not. So here's what it looks like in MetaTrader. I have eliminated some of the other lines uh, that are available to you in uh, MetaTrader to show how the system works as a standalone system. I prefer to use the cloud just because my uh, indicators work great for me. When you come out of the cloud here, notice the same thing here with my 1224 kind of thing and so forth, and then back down. And the idea is if you're inside the cloud, it's going to be a little choppy, and indeed it was. So 
Now, that's enough of MetaTrader. If you have interest in that, please uh, check out my other videos and my uh, couple books on, uh, on uh, Amazon Kindle. In particular, those are listed down in the description. But the amazing Zealander Flytrap Forex Trading Strategy has been around since uh, 2015, and it's still the test of time. So uh, have at it if you're interested. This is uh, an interesting market, and quite frankly, uh, I find it a little easier to track than certainly futures and uh, many of the equities and, and options that we uh, talk about with ATP. Okay, so now here we are back over in Fidelity Active Trader Pro. We have the uh, correct number of, uh, of, of uh, candles on our screen, so let's take that out. Let's move this down, and as a matter of fact, let's just get rid of the RSI right now, just so you'll be able to see uh, more clearly what's going on with our screen. <clears throat> Come down here and move us up a little bit, <clears throat> maybe move us over. Now, as you know, we've used the 20, uh, the 47, EMA 47, right here. <clears throat> when I went to look for the T3 Tilson here, I went to indicators. <clears throat> And I went way over here and clicked and clicked. And guess what? No support for that. But then I looked at Wilder moving average. And Wes, uh, Wells Wilder was another of the fantastic analysts early, late 1990s, uh, just like uh, Mr. Tilson was. And so I said, why don't I give this one a whirl? So notice that we now have a red mark for our 47. And look what happens when we... Uh, go to our Wilder, it, it turns to green. And I said, what the heck's going on with that when I first did it? N basically, the Wilder smooth moving average is the same in this particular chart. It turns out to be about the same as our 47 uh, to 50 kind of EMA. And the reason that I found out in Investopedia was that uh, it's basically double up what it would be in a regular uh, in a regular EMA. So if you've got a 12, you have a 24. So in fact, if it's a 24, that turns into a 47 or 48. And so that's the situation. So that was pretty good. We don't need this one because we've already got our EMA 47. So that was quite helpful to us. We'll get rid of it and turn us back to red here. <clears throat> and now let's take a look at the other indicator that I wanted to show you and showed you over in MetaTrader. And that uh, is very simply the Ichimoku cloud. Let's find it for us here. There it is right here. Okay. Now that looks like a complete mess, I'm sure. But bottom line, I told you I had eliminated these lines, the yellow, the red, and the blue, and simply used my moving averages. So let me show you how to do that here. If you come to Modify, you first of all, you left-click on that icon. Modify pops up. We modify. Now, this line and this line and this line are the ones we want to try to darken. And so here's how you do it. You click on it. And then it goes there, and we got rid of the blue one. Now let's see if we can get rid of this one. Uh, that's that. And then this is that. And now, if we apply, what we end up with is the same cloud that we had over in uh, MetaTrader. And so I thought that might be helpful to you. Is, you know, obviously here, down we go with our crossover of our lines. Back we come, but we're struggling still. I told you this is the area to be a little careful. Then we're in the midst of the of the cloud, so this is potentially a nice move to the upside. But until it's confirmed up here, that's what you want to uh, kind of wait for. And so that is uh, that's how those indicators come together. And I thought those were two new indicators that you would be interested in experimenting with. Okay, guys. That's it for this one. We'll come back in the next video because I would like to show you again how uh, we can compare uh, Forex with the uh, market for equities and in particular how you can potentially trade currencies by going to an ETF. So stand by for that. Subscribe, as I said, if you'd like our, our information and hit the bell if you'd like to be notified when that next video is posted. Thanks again for watching and take care.